On today's episode of The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly, we're going to take a look at the new update for Topaz Photo AI. This is update version 1.0.9. It looks like they're coming out weekly. There's a new feature in here. Now we can drag and drop folders for batch processing. Let's check this out. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Yes, there is another update for Topaz Photo AI. This is version 1.0.9, and it does look like they're coming out every week with a new update. I don't know if this will continue, but it is a work in progress, like I said, and I really love the direction that it is going in. Here's the release notes in case you want to pause the video and take a look at this. I'll link this in the description of the video as well if you want to go here and take a look at these release notes. They've updated the AI engine. First time caching should be slightly faster. Here's a nice change. We can now drag and drop files right into Photo AI. That means if you have a bunch of raw files that you want to batch process, you can just open up a folder where those uh, files live and drag those images right into Photo AI, saving you a lot of time. So that's a welcome update. And there's been some bug fixes and they're still working on the AI brush and also performance of the preview panel. They're working on that as well. This video should be a little bit on the shorter side this time, but let's take a look at this new batch processing where we could drag a bunch of files from a folder. So let me go ahead, I'm on a Mac. I'm just gonna go to my finder and go to a file folder. I have some images in this file folder right here. So I have these images here. I'm just gonna grab these images and drag them right onto Photo AI. And just like that, there they are, right inside of Photo AI. You can see them all down here. It scans the first image. And then if we take a look to the right side of this interface here, we can see a subject was detected. And if I hover over subject, you can see there is the subject right there. And face recovery disabled. I could run it if I wanted to, but I don't have a face here, so I wouldn't need to do that. And you notice here it says improving raw image quality. Well, that's interesting. If I hover over this icon, we get some tooltip information here. And what it's doing is it's enabling raw remove noise to improve the fidelity and the detail in your raw image. Pretty cool. Let me do something here. Let me zoom in to say 200% so we can really take a look here. And it has to update itself. So I'm gonna left click and hold with my mouse. Here's the before, and here is the after. It's removed some noise, but the detail, everything looks better. And if I open up raw remove noise, we can see that it has used a very small amount of noise reduction and it's added some detail. And you'll also notice with these autopilot settings that there is no sharpening added. It didn't feel the image needed sharpening. But that bump up in detail has really helped improve this image. And I think it's good and I would be happy with it just the way it was. I don't believe it needs any sharpening. And I do find that Photo AI pretty much gets it right pretty much all the time in the autopilot settings. If you found an image that needed some extra work, you can go ahead and work in any of these modules if you want to. But if you were satisfied, you clicked on a few images and you thought everything was good, just hit save and it'll save those images out to wherever you tell it to go to and you'll be done and you'll be ready for the next phase of your editing. I really like these tool tips. Now these tool tips, I don't recall seeing them on the last update. They may have been there and I just missed it, but I really noticed them on this update. But let's look at some of these tool tips. Now, this first tool tip, using raw image data. Now, this is what it tells us. Raw remove noise module available for highest quality processing. I guess Topaz are telling us if you want the best noise reduction and sharpening, do it at the raw level. Now, I don't do it at the raw level, but I may have to rethink my process. But that's for another video. Let's look at this next tool tip under subject detected for subject. This is really interesting to me because I know that the subject detection is for the sharpening module, but this is telling us that it's not only for that, it's also for, it's used for blur and noise estimation. So that's pretty interesting. So it's looking for a subject and it's using it for blur and noise estimation. For instance, it picked this area of the image as a subject. So it's using that to determine if the image has a blur problem or how much noise 
photo AI needs to reduce. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So it's used for that as well as for your sharpened mask. Now for the face recovery disabled, it's telling me, hey, you've disabled automatic face recovery and autopilot settings. Selecting run will detect and recover faces in this image only. Under uh, preferences, I did under autopilot configuration, I did disable my face detection. And the reason I do that is because I don't do a lot of face images and I feel autopilot will be a little bit quicker if I don't have that enabled. That's just what I think, but who knows? I may be wrong there. Next, let's take a look at the raw remove noise tool tip. When I hover over this icon, it tells us, and this is what's making me rethink, do I want to process my raw files first than photo AI? So I'm really going to be working on that to see if I want to change my workflow. Anyway, I'll let you know if I do. Raw remove noise increases image quality by using raw image data to remove noise while preserving detail. So it's doing more than just removing noise as we saw in this image. On this area right here, it's also brought a lot of detail back in here and it didn't need to use any sharpening. Also, here's a tip. This module will improve almost all raw images, not just noisy ones. So we can see here that the remove noise module is doing more than just removing noise. It's also preserving detail that could be lost when you're removing noise. Now let's look at the tool tip for sharpen. Sharpen removes softness issues caused by misfocus, motion blur, or camera shake, just like in Sharpen AI. And here's a tip. Enable subject only to selectively apply this module. And you're going to find that select subject. If I open up this sharpen module, you'll see that select subject only right there. You can toggle this off or toggle it on. I'm going to go ahead and shut the sharpen off so we won't be adding any extra sharpening to this image. But that's where you could toggle on that select subject. And don't forget you have tools in there that you can work on the mask or add to that mask. I'm finding these tool tips to have a lot of really good information to really help me to understand this product better. Let's check out the tool tip for Recover Faces. Recover Faces dramatically improves low quality or low resolution faces and is especially impressive when upscaling your photo. Tip, don't use an already high quality faces. So that's really good information. If you have a really high quality image of some faces, do not use this. But if you have lower quality, faces, you know, smaller faces or whatever in an image, and you want to help those faces out, definitely use Recover Faces. It will help, and it's really good. Now, the last tool tip, and I think I saved the best tool tip for the last, and that's Enhanced Resolution. Let's hover over this icon, and I was kind of amazed here, and I kind of suspected this but wasn't sure, but check this out. Enhanced Resolution intelligently generates new pixels for high quality upscaling. For best results, choose the type of input image in the selector. Tip, you can also use this at 1x, in other words, not upscaled, to improve general image quality. And I'll show you that. You will see an improvement on this image, but hang in there for one second. Let's open up image resolution and I wanna show you something. This is what they were referring to by choose the type of input image in the selector, you have natural graphics or low resolution, okay? So you have these different ones and you could click on the different ones and try them out. Okay, so right now we have low resolution on. Now this is not a low resolution image, but let's click on natural, give it a second or two to update. You can see it's uh, thinking here. And look at that, <laughs> that image has improved under natural. Let me shut this off, so be watching right here. I'm gonna shut it off. See the difference? Now let me turn it back on. It has improved that image, hasn't it? It really has. So this does work. So you can use this not only on upscaling images, but you can use it on images that you're not upscaling and on your raw images too. And you have the different modes that you could try here. So I found that very interesting. And thanks to these tool tips, I got a bit of an education here. So check those tool tips out. I really wanted to point that out today in this tutorial.
Now I could go and click on each one of these images and check them out and see if autopilot is doing a good job. I'm not going to take the time and do that right now, but say for instance, I was happy with everything just the way it is. I could click save eight images and now we could come here and make some choices here of how we want to save these out for the file name. We can give them the prefix photo AI, or you could type anything in there you want. You could give it a suffix. You could toggle this on and it'll, uh, add the filter names to the file name and then under save to you have your choice here there's a drop down you could go ahead and browse give it a new folder or i like to go back to the original folder but you have choices there and under format you have different formats there's a drop down here right now it's set to jpeg but these are raw files so i'd want to keep them raw so i would click on dng to keep them in a raw format and all i would do is click save and they would go back into that original folder. Well, there it is, everyone. This is the latest update for Photo AI version 1.0.9. Now with drag and drop folders for batch processing. And check out those tooltips. I really enjoy those tooltips. They've really helped me out by really checking them out and reading through them. If you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today on the joy of editing with Dave Kelly, and I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.